Lesson 6.6, .6, Solving Inequalities by Addition or Subtraction. An inequality is a mathematical property that compares quantities. Solution of an inequality. Any solution that makes the inequality true. So there are infinitely many solutions to inequalities. An example of this would be the solutions of the inequality x is less than 3 are all numbers that are less than 3. So if you see how I just read that problem, x is less than 3. Um, sometimes in the past, you may have memorized that, like, you haven't memorized what each sign was. You just remember that it eats the bigger one. And if that's what you did and you don't have memorized which sign is which, that's something you're going to need to work on um, because we'll be reading sentences and writing sentences, and you'll need to know which one is less than, which one is greater than, and so on. So as I was just saying, these are the symbols that you're going to want memorized. Um, I'm not going to go over them each section. They'll be on your packet for each section, but they, you know, you won't be given um, this chart on your test. You will have to have them memorized. So the first one is less than. In words, um, keywords that when you're trying to write a word problem, um, something, or when you're not writing a word problem, but when you're doing a word problem, um, is less than or is fewer than are keywords to make you go, oh, I'm going to need the less than symbol. Um, words that might make you think of the greater than symbol would be is greater than, is more than, exceeds. So that would be your greater than symbol. Your less than or equal to symbol. So when it has the line underneath it, that's less than or equal to. So if you think about it, it's half of an equal sign. It's less than or equal to, is no more than, or is at most would be keywords for that symbol. Here's your greater than or equal to would be is greater than or equal to, is no less than, or is at least. Um, if you struggle with memorizing which one of these are, um, remember my left-handed trick. I'll teach you again in class if um, you don't remember, but if you take your left hand and make an L and kind of tilt it, that's less than um, symbol. So that's an easy way that I use to remember which one is less than and which one is greater than. So the first type of problem is it's asking, is each number a solution of X is greater than or equal to 5? So the first thing you're going to do is plug this in and say, is negative 2, is that greater than or equal to 5? And if you think about it, negative 2 is not greater than or equal to 5. So this would be, no, this is not a solution to this problem. 10, is 10 greater than or equal to 5? In fact, it is. So yes, this is a solution. 25 divided by 5 is 5. So is 5 greater than or equal to 5? And it is equal to 5, so this is a solution. So you would just write yes. So you're just simply plugging it in and saying no, this is not a solution, or yes, it is. Okay, graphing tips. So um, I don't think I said it on the last end of last slide. Um, since the solution of an inequality is not just one number, you can use a graph to indicate all the solutions. So we're going to review now. How do we graph? So an open circle on a graph is used to indicate the greater than or less than because the number is not included in the solution set. Is not included. That's the part I really struggled with remembering this when I was younger. But that's the part that finally helped me get it. Closed circles are used to indicate greater than or equal to or less than or equal to because the number is included, is included in the solution set. So we're going to color everything that's included in the solution set, which is why a closed circle will include the answer and an open circle will not. Um, then we're going to use the flip and switch rule. When the variable starts out on the right side of the inequality, you're going to switch the variable and the number so that the variable is on the left side. Then flip the inequality symbol. This will make it easier to graph. And you'll that right now probably sounds like uber confusing, but when you see it in a problem, it all makes sense. Okay, graph the solutions of the following inequalities. So we have x is less than 3. See how it's critical? I know that symbol means less than 3. So my rule is that you have to have at least three numbers drawn onto your graph. So I have 3, 2, and 4. And if you, on a test, were to put the orders in the wrong order, like not according to a number line, that would be counted off. Um, so less than 3, that means that your answer cannot be 3. It could be 2.9, but your answer cannot be 3. So I make an open circle around 3, and then I shade everything to the left 
everything that's less than three, and I'm going to do it in highlighter so it's colored so you can see it. So that's just an easy way to show all the answers that are to the left of three, um, all the numbers that are to the left of three are an answer, possible answer to this question. Okay, I have negative one is greater than or equal to A. So this is where that flip it switch it rule comes into play. We always want our variable on the left side. So we do, oh, I'm in highlighter mode. I'm supposed to be in pen mode. There we go. A is less than or equal to negative one. So I just flipped it. If you thought, think about it, it was like I held up a mirror right here and I flipped it all over. Um, I do have a cheer, of course, that goes with it and it's flip it, switch it, rearrange it, flip it, switch it, rearrange it. And that reminds us that we always want the variable in front. We switch our symbol um, to make it in the order that it's easiest to grab or we can't graph it the other way. We only will get it right if we graph it this way. So again, I need three numbers on my graph. So I have negative one. Over here I have negative two. And to the right I have zero. And this is going to be a closed circle because negative one is included in the answer set. So it's A is less than or equal to negative one. So it's anything that's less than or equal to negative one. I'm gonna go ahead and color in my answers. And that's all I really have to do. Okay, now they want me to write an inequality for each of the following graphs. So the first thing I do is I pick a variable. It can be any variable you want. I'm going to pick K because K's are awesome because they're in my name. And my thing is having trouble here. So I have K. And this is talking about any number that is less than 2. 2 is not included in the answer set. And I know that because it's an open circle. So it's K is less than two. So if I look at my graph, I can see that my answer is any number that's less than two. So K is less than two. So I've written my inequality and I can circle it and that's my answer. And I come down here. This one's a little trickier. I'm gonna pick any variable and I'm gonna pick M for math because math rocks, right? And I'm talking about any, num any number that's greater than or equal to, and I know that it's greater than or equal to because it goes to the bigger numbers and it has an equal to because it's a closed circle. And that would be a number between zero and one, and it looks like it's dead center, so I'm going to do one half. You could write 0 0.5 as well. And I'm going to circle it. And that's my answer. Okay, I have solve p minus 4 is less than 1. Check and graph the solutions. So I draw my line. Don't forget what symbol's underneath there, though. And I add the opposite. So I have p plus negative 4. To get rid of a negative 4, I'm going to add a positive 4 to both sides. Because what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So I have p is less than 1 plus 4 is 5. So then I go to my graph, and I have 5. Six and four, and I'm talking about numbers that are less than five. I have an open circle, and I'm going to shade to the left. Okay, okay. I have solve eight is greater than or equal to d plus two. So I draw my line. And I'm going to add a negative 2 to both sides. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. 8 plus negative 2 is 6. So 6 is greater than or equal to D. And then I use my flip it, switch it, rearrange it rule to have my variable first. D is less than or equal to 6. I'll go ahead and circle it. Now I'm going to graph. I have my 6 down here. And five and seven. It's a little off because I can't see my cursor at the moment. And then I'm going to do a closed circle on six. And then I'm talking about anything that's less than or equal to six. So I'm going to shade less than or equal to six. Okay, I have solve in. Minus 7 is less than or equal to negative 2, so I'm going to add the opposite. And I'm going to draw my line. To get rid of a negative 7 so that the variable is by itself, I'm going to add a positive 7. 
what I do to one side, I must do the other. So this cancels out and I'm left with n is less than or equal to negative 2 plus 7 is 5. And then I'm going to go ahead and graph it. So I have 5, 4, and 6. Let me use a closed circle. I'm going to shade everything to the left because it's everything that's less than 5. And then I'm finished. Go ahead and hit pause and try this on your own. And then when you're ready, go ahead and come back and watch it. Hopefully you got the same thing I did, and that is C is greater than 3. And then when you go to graph it, this is what your graph should look like. Okay, go ahead and try this one on your own. And then hit pause. Well, hit pause and then try it on your own. And then um, hit play when you have your answer ready. Okay, we solve for T, and we get T is greater than or equal to 11. Remember, you have to use the switch it, flip it rule on this one. And then this is what your graph should look like. Okay, let's do one more with me. Solve negative 5 is greater than or equal to y plus 2. So we draw our line. We add a negative 2 to both sides. That's what you do to one side. You must do to the other. We add a negative 2 over here. Negative 5 plus negative 2 is negative 7 is greater than or equal to y. And we're going to use our switch it, flip it, rearrange it, switch it, flip it rearrange it, we get y is less than or equal to negative 7. We go ahead and graph it. Sometimes when you're graphing the negative number line, people will make the mistake of putting negative 6 where negative 8 is supposed to be. So make sure you're paying attention to that. We're going to use a closed circle. And then we're going to shade everything that's to the left of negative 7. Okay. <laughs> There's that obnoxious bell. Dylan has $18 to ride go-karts and play games at the state fair. Suppose the go-karts cost $5.50. Write and solve an equality to find the most he can spend on games. So he has $5.50 to spend at the go-karts plus X, which he can spend on games. And all of that has to be less than or equal to the total amount of money he has, which is $18. So we subtract $5.50 from both sides. And it's messing up, but we should get x is less than or equal to $12.50. So he can play $12.50 worth of games while he's at the state fair, or, yeah, wherever he is. <laughs> okay, Jerome took $20 to the store to buy a book and some CDs. If he buys a book that costs $4.50, how much can he spend on CDs? So you have $4.50 for the book, plus the amount he can spend on CDs, and that has to be less Hi. than or equal to... $20. So you subtract $4.50 from both sides and you get x, oh I forgot my zero, x is less than or equal to $15.50 $15 that he can spend on buying CDs. 